Do you want to learn how you can fully edit PSD files and manipulate your photos and images just like you would in Photoshop, but without a Photoshop subscription? And no, this doesn't involve trying to get an illegal copy of Photoshop or anything of that nature. It's free to use and I'm going to show you right now what it is. So firstly, this is what it looks like. It looks very similar to Photoshop, as you can see. I've got this image and in this case, a YouTube thumbnail open. And on the right, you can see all the layers that are involved, right? So I can enable and disable different layers. I can even edit the text right here and change it to audio enhancement or something like that, right? I can even go to any of these layers. In this case, I've got my headshot and go to filter, go to camera raw, and I'm given the option to change the different things like the temperature, tint, exposure, and contrast, vibrance, saturation, very similar to what Photoshop offers. And I've got a heap of other options and tools right here. So let me show you exactly what this tool is. All right, so the very tool that you can use to edit PSD files and a free Photoshop alternative is called PhotoP. Now call me a little slow or that I've been living under a rock, but I had no idea PhotoP existed because I've always been an Adobe Photoshop user and the suite of Adobe apps. But anyway, here's how PhotoP P works and how you can get access to it. Simply go to photop.com. I'll provide the link in the description box below. And then you'll land on this page where you can start adding your projects and your files and images. It supports a range of file formats, not just PSD files, but you can see some other file formats that it can handle and open. Starting a new project or opening up an existing PSD file is super simple. All you need to do is drop the file right here or you can click on new project. In this case, I'm going to open up this ebook mockup. It's a PSD file that we designed in Photoshop. So I'll drag and drop it right here, let it load. And now you can see it's opened. Now, just as you saw at the beginning of this video, the interface looks very similar to Photoshop. And you can see on the left, we've got the tools, we've got rectangle tool, we've got the lasso polygonal tool, and quite a few other options that are very similar to Photoshop. So if you wanna do some things such as healing and spot healing, all these tools are available. But let me demonstrate because I wanted to open up this uh, mock-up in particular because it uses smart objects, which is I thought, you know, a Photoshop kind of exclusive feature. Now, as a side note, I'm not a Photoshop expert or guru and I simply use it to do a few basic enhancements and adjusting and editing of some photos and mock-ups just like this. So this right here is a smart object. When I open this up and want to do this because I want to edit the title of the uh, book mock-up right here. So all I need to do is double click it. That'll open up the actual layer of this mock-up. And let's say you want to edit the title of this book. So instead of time mastery, we've got, you know, time mastery secrets or something like that. I'm just making it up and they'll increase the box size. All right, I'll click away and now I'll save this a smart object, close it, and then that'll take effect on the actual mock-up as you can see. So when I first tried this out, I was really impressed and didn't think that it would be able to handle this thing. And you may have noticed the layers pane right here. We've also got channels, paths, and on the left here, we've got other adjustments. We've got properties, some brush settings and text and character options and paragraph. If you've ever used Photoshop, this may be all familiar to you. You can even go to window and enable and disable different options as you can see. I wanna show you another example and use case. I've got this photo open. This is in Kyoto and I downloaded this photo from unsplash.com, but really love this city in Japan. But Let's select this background and we want to, let's say, enhance the uh, photo and en enhance the exposure, maybe the highlights and the shadows and things like that. So very similar to Photoshop, but one of the, some of the finer adjustments, but what you can do is go to filter, get a camera raw, and then on the right, you can see the adjustment handles. We can change the temperature of the uh, photo. As you can see, we can also change the tint, uh, the exposure, we can, you know, turn down the exposure, turn it up any way we want. 
changing the contrast, vibrance, and saturation too. We can even dial down and change the channel to particular colors like reds only, and then adjust it accordingly. And of course, you've got the basic options by going to image adjustments and then brightness levels and all these different things, just like in Photoshop. What's also great about PhotoP is that they've got a library of templates. So if you go back to the PhotoP homepage, you can go to templates and check out the range of templates that you can use freely. And yes, I said free and you can simply click on any of them and then load it up and start editing away. You'll see it's categorized by mockups. We've got social media, graphics and images, print, websites, presentations and other. Let's say we want to see what's inside the Instagram category. And here's the range of designs that we can start editing. Let's say we want to use this template right here. We'll click once and then we'll click again. That'll load it. And here it is. We can start editing the title by clicking the uh, T button on your keyboard. And yes, shortcuts do work. I, have, I don't know to what extent, but if I want the text tool, I just click the T on my keyboard. And if I want the selection tool right here or move tool more so, I click on the V, all right? So T, V, you can see I'm switching between the T and V. So I wanna edit this text and it's as simple as that, right? I just wanna change it to eight tips and there we go. In terms of file formats, you can save it as, you can go to file, export as, and you'll see there's PNG, JPEG, SVG, and much more. And of course there's save as PSD, and then you can save it right on your computer. Now, just for reference and to those who may comment and say there is another alternative to Photoshop and it's one called GIMP, have certainly known about that one in particular and it's free and open source. However, the issue with GIMP is that you're not able to edit the actual layers that were perhaps edited in Photoshop, right? Not like you would in, in Photopea where you're able to actually edit the smart objects and have those Photoshop capabilities. So despite GIMP offering the option to open PSD files, you're still not given the full capability of what you uh, should be able to do with your PSD files that were perhaps edited in Photoshop. You may be asking, what's the catch with Photopea and why is it for free? Well, I wanna explain a couple of downfalls to look out for, and these are just ones I observed and you know, by basing it on some of the basic uses. So the first being, let's say you want to enhance this uh, photo, right? We're in camera raw uh, mode. And when you're doing something like changing the temperature, it does take quite a long time to, you know, sync up. So it's not in real time, just like in Photoshop, but because it is kind of web-based, you're getting that delay and lag, which is, you know, may slow down your workflow and productivity. Photopea even offers a desktop version. And even so it's still that same lag that you will experience because it's still loading from the web. And the next downfall and one you probably didn't see because I didn't show it on screen is that on its free plan, you'll see ads. And that's how this, I guess, program is supported. And you'll see maybe four square ads right here. But from my years so far, this hasn't been a distraction. You know, you don't really see it and it's kind of like banner blindness. You know, you see ads anywhere. So can't really complain when it is for free. Apart from the ads, you're not given as many options and tools as you would in Photoshop, but that's kind of expected, right? If you're going to be using Photopea and this is a free tool, it's not gonna have the full options and functionalities of Photoshop. Now, if you do wanna support Photopea and the developer, you can always go to account and that's where you can see the pricing and plans. So the free plan includes all the features and you get a cloud drive of 0.5 of a gigabyte, but you can upgrade to its premium plan from just $5 per month. And you're given five gigabytes of storage. And in my opinion, you don't really need the storage because you're gonna save it on your desktop anyway, most in most cases. And ads will be removed and two times more steps in history and quicker email support. If you go to Go Premium, you'll see a single user for 30 days is just $10. And this is just kind of like a one-off payment. There's no contracts or plans. And what's also interesting about Photopea is when you go to distributors, you can actually embed and integrate Photopea on your web page. In other words, you can white label Photopea and offer it to your viewers and users and members. So all you need to do is just enter your domain name, save the settings, and then pay for one of the uh, options, right? So if you want a thousand views per month, 
then it's $60 for 30 days. Because it is a free tool, you may be skeptical using it because you don't want to rely on it and depend on it. And then if one day they stop developing it or something like that, you know, you may have to find another alternative. But uh, just to give you a peace of mind, you know, they've been out since like 2013. If you look at their uh, copyright right here, 2013. And these are the major changes that they've made. If we go back to blog, so the latest change was in January 14, 2023. So there's been, you know, updates here and there, as you can see. And if you do want to learn how to use PhotoP further, you can go to tutorials and then there's a range of tutorials right here. But even if you watch some Photoshop tutorials, it may actually be similar to uh, what you can apply to PhotoP. And that's PhotoP in a nutshell and how you can still edit PSD files without the use of Photoshop. As a side note, I'm not sponsored in any way by PhotoP. I just thought this is a pretty cool tool that I think you will actually use. So I hope this was helpful. And if it was, by all means, give this video a thumbs up. In the meantime, I'll leave up a couple of relevant videos right here for you to watch next. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.